when you move to a new country, particularly one that speaks a completely different language, adapting can be quite difficult. But because we are living in the new age of technology and have access to the internet, our phones and other electronic devices can be used to help those of us who have taken the bold step of uprooting our lives and moving to new and unfamiliar environments to adapt better to our new normal. So now I'm sure you're wondering what apps can I as an international student living in Germany not live without? Well, for that, you'll have to stick around just a little bit longer. But FYI, this list does not contain any social media apps. Let's get started. Why haven't you played the title thing? It should come like now. Subscribe. What? Remind them to subscribe. Ah, okay, okay. But before we get started, hit the like and the subscribe button. Almost 80% of you watching these kind of videos don't subscribe. So let's make a deal. Hit the subscribe button and if by the end of this video you don't get any value, you can leave a comment in the comment section down below and tell me how you think I can improve the quality of these videos. I'll wait. Let's get started. I know you aren't expecting the weather app to be at the top of the list, but hear me out for a second. As an international student coming from an equatorial region with fantastic weather throughout the year, I never really paid much attention to weather forecasts as much because throughout the year there is usually two main seasons. It's either sunny and warm or cold and rainy. In Germany, the weather is pretty extreme and it is usually cold, grey and depressing in the winter and boiling hot in the summer. But the thing about European weather, particularly in Germany, is that it is really moody. I don't really know if that's the best word to use to be honest, but what I'm trying to say is that the weather keeps changing multiple times a day. Like for example, in the winter it can be cloudy from 7 to 10 a.m. and then the sun appears till like 1 p.m. and then it snows till around 5 p.m. and then it rains until midnight. So assuming you left the house at 11 a.m. without an umbrella and you are wearing, let's say, your favorite pair of sneakers, you'd be pretty much screwed because on the way home in the evening, you'd have a hard time walking because of the ice and you'd probably be rained on. But if you checked the weather app before leaving your house, you'd be better prepared and this is why this app is number one on today's list. It is the most important non-social media app on my phone because without it, I'd find myself in very awkward situations. In a previous video, I said this. Germany has one of the best transportation systems in the world. Especially in big cities such as Munich, you have buses, trams and different types of trains, such as the U-Bahn and the S-Bahn, which usually operate until 1 in the morning. In the first couple of days after I landed in Germany, I'll be honest, the transportation system simply overwhelmed me. Because first of all, you have buses, trams, U-Bahn, S-Bahn, all these different stations, platforms and timetables. To make things worse, you have these monstrosities called transportation maps with all sorts of colored lines for the different modes going in all sorts of directions, like it was all too much for me in the beginning. With Google Maps, I don't have to stress about anything. All I need is a destination address. I literally don't need to know what street I am currently on. I just turn on my location. Once I have my destination address, I know what time my journey is supposed to start, which modes I am going to use, what time it will arrive at my stop, how long the journey will take, and after how many stops I will come out of the vehicle, and what is my expected travel time. Literally all the info is right on my phone. No wonder people here are always on time. The reason why maps is second on the list and not first is because once you master a particular route, you don't really need to use the app every day.
when you live in a country where a completely different language is spoken, having a good translation app can be a lifesaver. I know this may sound a little bit controversial, but DeepL is the best translation app I have ever used. This is because other translation apps such as Google Translate tend to make, you know, direct translations and in the process it can end up slightly changing the meaning or the tone of whatever text you are trying to read. An example use case of when having the DeepL app comes in handy is when I usually receive mail in German. I usually don't bother reading it. Most of the time I just take a picture and read the translation in order to be able to quickly understand what the letter said. When I first came to Germany, I was very dependent on this app, but ever since I started learning the language, I mostly use it when I cannot afford to misunderstand important letters or emails or any other documents. And so that's why it's only third on my list. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think is currently the best music streaming app. And if you say anything other than Spotify, Stop it. Get some help. Honestly, music is so essential to my day that on the days I forget to carry my AirPods, I feel as if I am naked or I have left a part of me behind. 9 out of 10 times when I realize I've forgotten my earphones at home, I always go back for them, even if it means being a little bit late. I don't know how to explain it, but music helps to make the commutes to work or school feel shorter. Waiting times at places like the doctor's office seem less boring, and most importantly is the ability to shut out the world at a moment's notice and just continue existing in your own bubble. That feeling is honestly so relaxing. As someone who has had the opportunity to use Deezer for almost three years, Apple Music for another two and a half years, and now Spotify for over six months, I honestly think that out of the three, Spotify is the best, and since I can't place it higher than the other apps I've already talked about, it gets fourth on the list. As an international student, I am always trying to save money. And one of the ways I do so is by paying for as little data as I need. I can't really misuse my data because it has to last me the whole month. That basically means that I would need to connect to public Wi-Fi when I am outside of my house for long periods of time. Like for example, there are days I am in the university from 9am to 4pm. I can't just depend on monthly data and so I end up connecting to the university Wi-Fi. We all know the risks associated with connecting to public Wi-Fi's, so I'm not really going to get into that topic in this particular video. Therefore, having a VPN is super important just to give me that added layer of protection when I connect to public Wi-Fi's. Since you never really know who else is on that network and maybe what they are up to. My VPN of choice is Surfshark VPN because it provides value for money when comparing to other providers. In this day and age, not many people prefer physically going to buy a product at a store anymore because you can simply do it online, literally from the comfort of your own bed, and have it delivered to you the next day. When's the last time you went to the mall? It's probably been a while. Due to the popularity of online shopping, thousands of malls in this country close every year, and many of the ones still open look like ghost towns. I walk inside, and this is what I am seeing. Just nothing. Everything is empty. Unfortunately, I'm part of this group of people who prefer online shopping. I say unfortunately because I feel online shopping is just making me more introverted and lazy because the only time I leave my house to go and buy something is when I either need it immediately or I know a cheaper place that does not sell online. Like a couple of months ago, I needed a printer. So I physically went to a store saw a printer that was in my price range and had the features that I wanted, 
but I didn't want to carry around the big box. So while in the store, I went on to the Amazon app, searched for the printer, ordered it and it was delivered to my house the next day. Nowadays, I don't even bother going to a store. I just simply order it on Amazon. I don't really like doing it, but these days shopping on Amazon has become so convenient to the point where it has become my main way of shopping. So that's why it's one of my most important apps. As a student, taking notes is an essential part of studying as these same notes are eventually used for exam preparation at the end of the semester. When you attend a lecture, the professor usually sends notes in PDF form before the lecture starts, but a lot of the time, not all the information is on the PDF. Some information is communicated verbally during the lecture. So you need to write your own notes either during or immediately after the lecture. Before, I used to use traditional pen and paper, but that has three main challenges. One, every unit needs its own book. And let's say you do a total of 20 different units in your program. Those are 20 different books that will end up being stuffed in a box or even thrown away after graduation. It's not really the best way to conserve the environment. Two, if you damage or lose your notes, particularly before exams, you're pretty much screwed. And three, you have to juggle and shift between two or more places to read. So for example, you could have PDF notes, plus handwritten notes, plus flashcards, which can make studying way more complicated. Ever since I got Notability, I have never really looked back to be honest because I don't need to waste paper anymore. I just need one device and I can create different subjects for every unit that I take. I can write additional notes directly onto the PDF during the lecture which reduces the extra amount of study material that is usually generated by traditional pen and paper. Also, if I were to lose my device, all my notes would still be safe because it's all backed up to the cloud. The best part about Notability is that you can also use it for more than just schoolwork. Like for example, when coming up with scripts for these videos, I do it while using the app. There's also the added benefit of being able to create your daily, weekly, and even monthly plan using the various templates available in the gallery. And lastly, if you're bored and have nothing else to do, you can draw and even color. I guess the only downsides is that it's only available on iOS and it's a paid app. But at only €14.99 per year, I think it's really worth it for what you get in return. Finally, the last important app in today's list is ChatGPT. AI is everywhere these days. I challenge you right now to think of any job out there, and I'm pretty sure AI has somehow had an influence on it. As a student, ChatGPT can be a lifesaver. Like for example, earlier this semester during a lecture for one of the courses I was taking, we were divided into groups of five and given two themes and each one of us was meant to come up with a research question addressing a problem regarding those two themes. For the first 10 minutes, we literally came up with only two research questions which were very similar to each other. And so one of us joked that maybe we should ask GPT. And in literally five seconds, we were able to get 10 different research questions and we were able to complete the assignment. I don't just use chat GPT for schoolwork. Like for example, the script of one of my best performing videos on this channel was written by chat GPT. That's the beauty about this app. When you ask it the right questions, it will give you the right answers, which is why it has managed to sneak into my list of my most important apps. And there you have it. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more insightful content. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in future videos, let me know in the comment section down below. Until next time, 